Hello, my Facebook family and friends. I pray that all is well with you today. And here we are on Mother's Day. Let me just say at the outset, before I get started, that in my world and in my life, every day is Mother's Day. Just reserving one day for mothers is not enough. Motherhood is the most beautiful thing that can happen to a woman. Let me also share this with you before we look at uh, the woman I've chosen from the Bible for today. You don't have to give birth to children to be a mother. There are plenty of stepmothers around. There are godmothers around. There are loving aunts around. I believe that inside every woman, every female, God has given a nurturing spirit, has given a spirit of love and comfort and nurture. And so when we talk about Mother's Day, at least in my world, I honor every single woman because every woman has the potential to be a mother, whether she gives birth to a child or not in the natural way, or whether she adopts a child, or whether she's just a godmom. Every woman has a chance to be a mother, and so I honor all of you today on this Mother's Day. Now, having said that, I'm going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 1 today in chapter 2. We're going to be talking about a woman named Hannah one of my favorite women of the Bible, a true role model for godly mothers and godly women. Now, the story of Hannah takes place in just two chapters of the Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 1 Samuel chapter 2. That's it. She disappears after that. But what we have in these two chapters is absolutely amazing, and I really can only scratch the surface of what the Lord has given me for today's message. And so what I would encourage you to do is to read 1 Samuel chapter 1, and 1 Samuel chapter 2 and read the story of Hannah in its entirety because you will be greatly blessed by it. The other thing that I wanted to point out before we get started is, did you know that Hannah is the fourth woman in the Bible that her womb was barren? Did you know that? If we go chronologically in the Bible, she is the fourth woman whose womb was barren. Number one, you remember, was Sarah. Number two was Rebecca. Number three was Rachel. And if you read each one of those stories, each of their wombs was barren and God blessed them with children. In the case of Sarah, she gave birth to Isaac. In the case of Rebecca, she gave birth to Jacob and Esau. In the case of Rachel, she brought us Joseph. And so we come to the fourth woman in the Bible whose, whose womb is barren, and that is Hannah. And so I'm going to go through this rather quickly, and as I said, I encourage you to read both of these chapters in their entirety to understand the full impact of Hannah's life. But there's a few things that I jotted down yesterday as God was talking to me that I want to share with you. Now, Hannah happened to be married to a man named Elkanah, and he also had another wife, Peninnah. Now, the story goes that Peninnah had children, but Hannah did not have children. And Peninnah was not so nice of a person because she was taunting and making fun of Hannah year after year, the Bible says. If you're with me in 1 Samuel, I'm going to start here in verse 6. And I'm going to be skipping around, so I hope you can follow me. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And her adversary, that's Peninnah, provoked her sorely, or greatly, for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And each year they went up to give a sacrifice, verse 7 says, she provoked her, and Hannah was weeping, and she didn't eat. Her husband, in verse 8, comes to her and says, Hannah, what, what is the problem? Aren't I better to you than, than ten sons? Now you'll notice here that in verse 9, she rose up, and Eli the priest, who was at the temple, happened to see her. But look in verse 10, because this is the first attribute I want to share with you about Hannah. And she was in bitterness or, or sadness of her soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept. The first thing I want you to see that Hannah, through these verses I shared with you, is a woman of strength and integrity. Do you notice that each of the time that her adversary or, or Elkanah's other wife was taunting her, was provoking her, she never struck back. She never said an evil word. She never put a curse on her. She never despised her. There's nothing in scripture that says she does that. Hannah was a woman of strength and conviction and integrity. And even when Elkanah asked her back in verse 8, you know, what's wrong? She even didn't say, she didn't place blame anywhere. She didn't yell. She's a woman of strength and integrity. That's the first thing I want you to see about Hannah. So she's at the temple and she's praying. So we see in verse 10 now, she was in bitterness of soul 
and prayed unto the Lord and wept bitterly. Hannah was also a praying woman. You'll notice even after her husband asked her, aren't I better to you than 10 sons? She didn't answer her husband. She prayed directly to God, prayed to the Lord. So the second attribute that Hannah had was she is a woman of prayer. But watch this. We're going to go to verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the infliction of thine handmaid, she's talking about herself, and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Do you hear what she's saying here? Hannah was a woman of sacrifice. She asked God, if you give me a son, I will give him right back to you. And you can have him for all the days of his life. All the days of his life. Give me a son, Lord. Answer my heart's cry. Give me a son, and I will give him to you. Hannah was a woman of sacrifice. She was willing to give away her child to the Lord. Amazing. Let's keep going. Now, we get to the section where Elkanah... Um, Sorry, Eli, the priest, thinks that he's drunk. And she says, no, I'm not drunk. I'm not drinking. Look what happens in verse 15. After Eli, the high priest, said to her, how long will you be drunken? Put away your wine. He said that in verse 14. Look at what Hannah says in verse 15. Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Here's another attribute that Hannah had. She was a woman of sobriety. She may have been acting to someone else like she was drunk, but she had no wine, no strong drink. She was fully in her right mind. She was praying to God. And it appeared because her lips were moving, but he didn't hear any voice. She was praying in her head, but her lips were moving. We've all done that. I've done that. You've done that. We'll start praying something and we'll just be mouthing something. Well, Eli, the high priest, took that as her being drunk. She's saying no. I don't drink. Hannah was a woman of sobriety. Now watch this. In verse 16, then she continues talking to Eli. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken. Hannah was a woman of virtue. She's telling, she's telling Eli, the high priest, and she's telling us too. She's not involved with wine or strong drink. She doesn't want to be counted as a daughter of Belial. She worships the God of the Bible. She believes in the God of the Bible. She has faith in the God of the Bible. And so just real quickly here, if I go back through these five attributes as we've looked at them so far, Hannah is a woman of strength and integrity. She is a woman of prayer. She is a woman of sacrifice. She is a woman of sobriety. And she is a woman of virtue. Now, we take that and we use that as a foundation. Now watch what happens. In verse 17, Eli the high priest says to her, after she straightened them out about not being drunk, he says, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee the petition that thou hast asked of him. Remember what she asked? Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him to you all the days of his life. That's what she's praying for. Now watch what happens. Because Hannah has all of these attributes, because she is such a godly woman, God is going to bless her. Now watch this. In verse 19 of 1 Samuel 1, it says, Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. They had relations. And the Lord remembered her. She was remembered by God because of her faith, because of her prayer life, because she was sober, because she had virtue, because she served the Lord. She had integrity. She didn't fall like Peninnah did and start sniping at one another. She held her ground, and she prayed for a son. And now the Bible says that God remembered her. Watch this. Verse 20. It came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, she bared a son. That's what she asked for. She bared a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Look at that. Right in front of her eyes, Hannah becomes a mother. She's now on an equal par with Peninnah. Peninnah cannot hassle her anymore, cannot knock her anymore, cannot make fun of her anymore because Hannah is now a mother. They have to go up each year to do their yearly sacrifice. Now remember, remember what Hannah had promised way back 
earlier in the chapter. She's going to give him to the Lord, but I want to see another attribute. Look in verse 22 of 1 Samuel 1. They were heading up for the yearly sacrifice, but she said to her husband Elkanah, I will not go up until the child be weaned. I'm not going. And then I will bring him when he's finally weaned, that he may appear before the Lord, catch this, and abide there forever. Did you see that? Hannah was a woman of independence. That's another great quality that mom can have. Independence. She was a woman of independence. Yes, she was submissive to her husband. Yes, she honored her husband. But in this case, she said, I'm not going up there until Samuel is properly weaned, until I know that he's ready to go up there. Why? Because she knew that she was giving him away to the temple, to the service of the Lord for the rest of his life. She wanted to make sure that he was raised up properly, that he was healthy, that he was ready to go. And so she said to her husband, I'm not bringing him up until I know that he's ready. Husband said, that's okay. That's fine. You do what you need to do. Then she finally, when he's weaned him, it says in verse 24, when she had weaned him, she took him up to the temple. Verse 27, let's drop down there. Now, Eli is standing there again, and she says to Eli, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Hannah was a woman who was thankful. She was grateful. She was, she was, she was happy. God gave her the desire of her heart. She asked for a son. And now she's back at the temple ready to dedicate him, ready to leave him behind. And she's saying to Eli, do you remember? I was the woman that was here. This is the child that was promised to me. She was a, she's a woman of thankfulness. And then in verse 28, now watch, this is where she finishes the promise. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. Hannah was a woman who kept her promise. Do you remember back in verse 11, I think it was, she said, Lord, if you give me a man child, if you give me a man, I will give him right back to you. So the story, as the story advances, she weans Samuel. She brings him up. Now she's at the temple and she's telling Eli, I'm giving him to God now. I had the desire of my heart filled. What an incredible woman Hannah was. But we're not done yet. When we go into chapter 2, we read what's known as the Song of Hannah. And I would encourage you, as I said before, read all of this, these two chapters in context. But I'm going to move along for a couple other things here that I want to show you about Hannah. Hannah clothed her child each year. You know, one of the important things a mother does, is we clothe our children. And we make sure they eat, and they're educated, and they're safe, and they're healthy. Look what Hannah did. Look at me in verse uh, 18. And chapter 2, verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Verse 19. His mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Each year she came back to see her son. And as he was growing, as he was getting older, she was making him a new coat. She was clothing him year after year. She was being a mother to the son that she didn't see except one time a year during the yearly sacrifice. Look what else. Verse 20. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife. Now look what the high priest said. The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their way. Eli is praying for them. You gave a son to the Lord. May God grant you with more. Now look what happens. Hannah is going to be blessed by God for giving Samuel to him. Watch what happens. Verse 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived. Watch this. She bared three sons and two daughters. And then it says the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Hannah had five more children after Samuel. Was she blessed? She dedicated Samuel. He's in the temple. He's ministering. But because of her faithfulness, because of all these attributes we were looking at, God saw fit to bless her with five more children. This is the last we hear of Hannah in the Bible. After this verse, verse 21, she disappears. And ultimately, the story then focuses on Samuel. 
which then focuses on King Saul, which then focuses on King David, and so on, and the story moves along. So Hannah disappears from Scripture, but for these two chapters, we see a godly woman who has many of the attributes that God looks for in his children. She was greatly blessed. She was honored by her husband, and she also was the mother of one of the greatest prophets who ever lived in the Bible, and that was Samuel. I hope that this message has been some encouragement to you, whether you're a mother or not. If you're a woman and you're reading this and you see these attributes of Hannah and you see how she was blessed by God, you can be blessed too and you are blessed already. If you're a woman, you already have that nurturing, mothering spirit in you. So if you've never given natural birth, it's okay. If you've adopted children, you're a mother. If you're a god mom, you're a mother. If you're a loving aunt that takes your niece and nephew out for lunch, you're a mother. Every female is a mother in one way or another. And so I salute all of you today. I pray that this message has been a, an encouragement to you. Please feel free to share this video or 